Madam President, we, I believe all of us who served with and knew Senator Byrd were saddened by words about and news about his passing. No senator came to care more about the Constitution or to be a more effective defender of our constitutional government than the senior senator from West Virginia. Madam President, how many times did we see him reach in his jacket pocket and hold up the Constitution? And he would say, this is what guides me. Now, Madam President, I said at the Judiciary Committee today, many of us carry the Constitution and we can turn to it and read from it. Senator Byrd, if asked, would recite it verbatim from memory, from page one, straight through. And he was a senator, senator. Whether it was on the times before he stopped playing when some of us could be at an event with him where he would play the fiddle, I recall one of those, where he played the fiddle and now his successor as president pro tem, Senator Inouye played the piano, playing compositions uh, requiring one hand. And the two of them played that in the caucus room, now named after our late Senator Ted Kennedy. But I heard him play that in the happy times, in the enjoyable times, and try to bring senators, both parties together, just to act like human beings. But I've also sat here with him when he reminded senators of what the Constitution stood for, what our role was in the Constitution, when he spoke against going to war in Iraq without reason and without a declaration of war. It's one of the most powerful speeches I've heard him give. And over 36 years of serving with him, I heard many, many speeches. Others can speak of his records for time served in the Senate, in Congress, the number of votes he cast. I think of Madam President Moore as a mentor and a friend. I recall in the fall of 1974, having been, having become the senator elect and coming down here to talk to senators and meeting with Senator Byrd and Senator Mansfield. Senator Mansfield being the leader, Senator Byrd the deputy leader. I recall one of the things he told me, both of them did, always keep your word. Robert Byrd, Robert Carlisle Byrd, if he gave you his word, go to the bank with him but he would expect the same in return as he should. That is something all of us should be reminded of, all of us should seek to achieve. I was honored to sit near him on the Senate floor and sitting near him in the same row and engage in many a discussion about the Senate and the rules or about the issues of the moment or about our, our family. But now when I sit here and I look at the flowers on his desk, I look at the drape on that Madam President, over the many years I've had the privilege of representing the state of Vermont in this body, I've had to come on the floor of the Senate and seen the traditional drapery and the flowers on either side of the aisle and we've lost dear colleagues. More than that, we've lost dear friends. Party is irrelevant. The friendship is what is important. And it tugs at your heart and it tugs at your soul to see it. Walking in here and just looking down the road where I sit and seeing that, I don't know when I felt the tug so strong. Because Marcel and I were privileged to know Bob and Irma, his wonderful Irma. We'd see them in the grocery store in Northern Virginia. Our wives would drive in together for 
Senate matters. I recall sitting with him in his office one day when he spoke of the death of his grandson and how it tore him apart. So he'd been killed in an accident. He had his portrait in his office with black drapery and we sat there, this man who could be so controlled. Um, we sat, held hands while he cried about his grandson. And at that time, I did not have the privilege of being a grandfather yet. Today, I think I can or fully understand what he went through. I remember the emotion and the strength of it. This was not the person you saw often as leader of the Senate, chairman of major committee, uh, running and in control, but a human being mourning somebody very dear to him. He was a self-educated man. He learned much throughout his life, but then he had much to teach us all. It's been spoken of how he would talk to the pages, but he would talk to anybody about his beloved Senate. And he did more than that. He wrote the history, the definitive history of the Senate. We all learned from him. He was a symbol of West Virginia. He was an accomplished legislator. He was an extraordinary American. And as a form of tribute that I suspect Senator Byrd himself would appreciate, let me quote from Pericles' funeral oration. From Thucydides' history of the Peloponnesian War about the inherent strength of democracy. Senator Byrd was well familiar with this passage with its relevance to our Constitution, our form of government. I heard him use it before. And Pericles is said to have spoken this way. Our form of government does not enter into rivalry with the institutions of others. Our government does not copy our neighbors, but is an example to them. It is true that we are called democracy, for the administration is in the hands of the many and not of the few. But while there exists equal justice to all and alike in their private disputes, the claim of excellence is also recognized. And when a citizen is in any way distinguished, he is preferred to the public service, not as a matter of privilege, but as a reward of merit. Neither is poverty an obstacle, but a man may benefit his country, whatever the obscurity of his condition. Senator Byrd believed in this country, Madam President. He believed that a youngster who had been adopted, who lived in a house without running water, who had to work for every single thing he obtained, could also rise to the highest positions in this body, the body that he loved more than any other institution in our government, save one, the Constitution. The Constitution was his North Star, his Load Star. It was what guided him. Senator Byrd was such an extraordinary man of merit and grit and determination, love of family. I call him sitting with his grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And he'd probably tell you how many there were. I remember, even after he was a widower, walking by here and leaning over and saying, how are you? And he said, I'm fine. And how's Marcel? And senators from both sides of the aisle coming just to talk with him. He drew strength from his deep faith. He took to heart his oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The arc of his career in public service is an inspiration to us all. 
It'll inspire Americans of generations to come. So Robert, I say goodbye to you, my dear friend. I'm not going to forget the friendship. I'm not going to forget how you mentored me. But especially, I will not forget, and I'll always cherish, even after I leave this body, your love of the Senate, Senator Byrd. You're one of a kind. I yield the floor.